Okay, uh, it is uh, 4 1 p.m. Welcome everyone to uh, this uh, inaugural joint webinar organized, co organized by Invest Hong Kong, the uh, Singapore Chamber of Commerce, and the Malaysian Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong uh, and Macau. Uh, th I'd like to thank uh, everyone for, for attending today. We have a good group of, uh, of attendees. I believe we have 71 participants at this point in time, and we expect uh, we have over 200 people signed up. So, uh, as is the case with these webinars, uh, you know, people tend to uh, dribble in over time. So, we should have a very good uh, crowd here. I understand that uh, the majority of our, well, at least, you know, I, I believe more than half of the participants are from Southeast Asia, the ASEAN nations. So, we have, uh, you know, definitely a lot of interest, and the others are. The other remaining attendees are uh, in actually in Hong Kong. Uh, my name is Basil Huang. I am the uh, vice chairman of the Singapore Chamber of Commerce and the managing partner of Housing LLP, uh, which is a firm that operates in association with uh, Anjie Law Firm. Uh, uh, you know, we are specialists in financial regulation in Hong Kong. <clears throat> I like to I like to start off by. Um, uh, introducing the uh, the uh, our co-organizers today, and our and, and to thank our supporting organizations. Uh, as I've mentioned, the uh, we we we're very honored today to be co-organizing today's event with Invest Hong Kong. Invest Hong Kong is the uh, Hong Kong government agency that is responsible and in you know uh, uh, taking the lead for uh, attracting and encouraging investment into Hong Kong. And today's topic uh, is especially pertinent because. Uh, we'll also be talking about how ASEAN companies can access the GBA through Hong Kong. Uh, and, and again, Hong Kong has for decades been the premier uh, launch pad for companies wanting to access the Chinese market. But today we're going to be talking specifically about using Hong Kong uh, to access the, uh, the very exciting and, and you know, probably the, one of the, the largest, uh, the, the area in, in China with the largest GDP, the Greater Bay Area or GBA. Um, the other co organizer, of course, is the uh, Singapore Chamber of Commerce Hong Kong. The Singapore Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong has been, was established in 1995 and is today the, uh, lead, the, uh, the official organization uh, with the support of the Singapore government. Uh, that is the Chamber of Commerce for Singaporean businesses and businessmen in, uh, in Hong Kong. The Malaysian Chamber of Commerce, likewise, in Hong Kong and Macau, is the uh, the Chamber of Commerce for, for Malaysian individuals and businesses operating in, in Hong Kong and Macau. And the Singapore Chamber and the Malaysian Chamber, uh, we've uh, co-organized other webinars before. And, and uh, you know, we, we hope to do more also with, with Invest Hong Kong going forward. And, and you know, we certainly work very closely, the Singapore Chamber with the Malaysian Chamber and have, have done so many times in the past. Um, the supporting organizations we have today are the Department of International Trade Promotion, the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Thailand, the Hong Kong Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines, the Indonesia Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong, the Indonesian Young Entrepreneurs Association, the Board of Investment of Thailand, and the Vietnam Software and IT Services Association. We'd like to thank them very much for being our supporting organizations today. Um, at this point in time, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, Mr. Stephen Phillips, who is the Director General of Investment Promotion at Invest Hong Kong, and also our panelists for today, our, our distinguished panelists. So we're very honored to have them uh, uh, share with us their uh, expertise and experience. <clears throat> um, Mr. Stephen Phillips is the Director General of Investment Promotion at Invest Hong Kong. Uh, at the government of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Mr. Phillips is uh, uh, the, of course, as I mentioned, Invest Hong Kong is the government department responsible for attracting and facilitating foreign direct investment into Hong Kong. Uh, Mr. Phillips' career has been focused on Asia for more than 30 years. He first moved to Hong Kong in 1989 and was holding senior investment banking positions with Deutsche Bank, uh, BZW, Barclays Capital, before co-founding a Hong Kong-based group of companies providing IT, financial, and consulting services across Asia. Uh, so in 2004, he joined the UK's Department of International Trade 
before becoming the chief executive of the China Britain Business Council in 2006, as well as chairman of the EU China Business Association. Mr. Phillips holds a Bachelor of Science in Chemistry and Law uh, from the University of Exeter. <clears throat> uh, let me go on to, to also introduce the other panelists. Mr. Charles Choi is the chairman and the chief executive officer of Tianjin Catering Group Limited. Tianjin Catering was founded in 2017 and is devoted to bringing change and a better culinary experience. Mr. Choi is responsible for the formulation and implementation of the strategies to achieve business objectives. In 2020, Mr. Charles Choi became a member of YBO and an individual member of the Singapore Chamber of Commerce in Hong Kong. Um, we next have, uh, after uh, Charles has spoken, we have Mr. Herman Jie. Uh, Herman is the head of business and professional services at Invest Hong Kong. Mr. Jie was in, appointed as the head of business and professional services at Invest Hong Kong. In December 2019, Invest Hong Kong. Uh, at Invest Hong Kong, um, he helps overseas and mainland companies to establish or expand their business presence in Hong Kong. He has over 25 years of work experience in the banking industry. Before joining Invest Hong Kong, he had worked at UBS, BNP, Paribas, and HSBC. Mr. Jai graduated from the University of New South Wales in Australia with a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering and York University, Canada with a master's degree in business administration. We also have with us today, uh, Mr. Ronald Sum. Uh, Mr. Sum is a partner in the Hong Kong office and he is the head of dispute resolution in Asia of Edelshaw Goddard Hong Kong LLP. He concentrates his practice in all areas of dispute resolution, speciali specializing in China related matters, cross-border disputes and international complex commercial disputes. Mr. Sum is qualified as a solicitor in Hong Kong, England and Wales, and Australia. He's a fellow member of the Hong Kong Institute of Arbitrators and a fellow member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators. He is the immediate past chairman of the International Chamber of Commerce, Arbitration and ADR Subcommittee. He's also the Council and Appointments Committee member of the HKIAC, the Hong Kong International Arbitration Center. He sits on the panel of arbitrators of various institutions and has acted both as counsel and arbitrator in administrative arbitration proceedings, including the ICC, HKIAC, LMAA, CTAC, SCIA, SIAC, THAC, GAFTA, FOSFA, etc. <clears throat> um, Ronald has con conducted arbitration in Hong Kong, China, London, United States, Indonesia, Vietnam, Australia, and Singapore. Ron is also an accredited member of HKMAL, CTEC, and the Law Society of Hong Kong. He was recently appointed as an investor state mediator under the mainland Hong Kong Closer Economic Partnership Arrangement, and he's a council member of the Hong Kong Mediation Council. He also sits on the Hong Kong Government Advisory Committee on the Promotion of Arbitration and the Hong Kong Steering Committee on Mediation. He is a director of EBRAM International Online Dispute Resolution Center. And last but certainly not least, we have Cindy Wong, <clears throat> um, the rose amongst the uh, uh, the thorns, I guess, in this in today's panel. Um, the, she, Cindy is the head of um, uh, tourism and hospitality in Invest Hong Kong, and, and she joined Invest Hong Kong in September 2004 and was promoted to head of tourism and hospitality in 2015. Her team attracts companies from. Um, Ho Ray Ka, and I'll leave it to Cindy to explain what Ho Ray Ka means. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hotel, travel. restaurant, and cafe. <laughs> oh, okay, there you go. So, uh, I, no, I, I uh, yeah, uh, hi. Um, tr uh, travel, mice. I think that's, uh, I, I know what mice is, but I can't exactly remember what, is, what it stands for, but it's exhibitions, you know, yes. meetings. Uh, Cindy, perhaps you could help me out here. Bingo, yes. Yeah, correct. It's uh, uh, my means uh, uh, meetings, incentives, and uh, uh, exhibitions. You're right. Conventions, conventions, and exhibitions. Wellness, beauty industries globally. Prior to joining Invest Hong Kong, Ms. Wong worked in a multinational advertising agency, entertainment group, the Hong Kong Tourism Board, and the banking industry. So all very, uh, very fun jobs. Um, Ms. Wong had a bachelor's 
an arts degree from the University of Hong Kong and is a certified financial planner. Uh, Cindy speaks fluent English, Mandarin and Cantonese. She's an animal lover and she enjoys bringing new dining and beauty concepts to Hong Kong, which is not only a passion for life, but her mission for Hong Kong. The recent, her recent Invest Hong Kong clients include Fortnum and Mason, Five Guys, very good burgers, by the way, Hai Di Lao, Impossible Foods, Informal Markets, Club Travel, QB House, Quintessentially, Sushiro, and others. Um, and with that, um, I'd like to hand the, uh, the microphone over to, uh, to Stephen, Mr. Stephen Phillips. Stephen, if uh, uh, I'll, I'll let Stephen take over and, and uh, deliver his uh, opening uh, address. Well, Basil, thank you very much, and good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to particularly thank the co-organizers, obviously the Singapore Chamber of Commerce here in Hong Kong, as well as the Malaysian Chamber of Commerce here in Hong Kong and Macau. And of course, all of our supporting organizations that Basil has mentioned from Thailand, Philippines, Indonesia, and Vietnam. Um, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to try at a very high level to cover off um, what I think is the most exciting economic development on the planet, um, known as the Greater Bay Area. Um, Hong Kong, as you will all know, being based in the region, um, is a great place to do business. We have over 9,000 um, international companies that call Hong Kong home. They use Hong Kong because of its central geographic location within Asia, um, because of Hong Kong's unique position under one country, two systems, um, part of China, um, but still with its own um, legal system based on common law, um, intellectual property environment, and so forth. And of course, the most international city within China itself. Um, the rule of law, very important, very important for business, but also the fact that Hong Kong has a very business friendly government. Just one manifestation of that is the low and simple tax regime that we've got in Hong Kong. Um, so what I'm going to do now is really focus on setting the scene for the GBA, touch on some of the facilitation measures in place, some of the resources you might have a look at after the event. Um, and then touch on Invest Hong Kong's role. All of this is also in the context of a number of trade investment mechanisms that exist. Um, there's a Hong Kong ASEAN FTA. Um, now that has different terms depending upon the individual member states within ASEAN. Um, and then there are different provisions depending upon the nature of your business. But that's one um, mechanism. Hong Kong has also got its own FTA, if you like, with the mainland called SEPA, um, which could also be something very useful um, for companies from ASEAN to get the most preferential access possible ever into the mainland by having an entity in Hong Kong. And of course, just in the last few days, we've seen the signing of the RCEP, um, which obviously um, it really covers the region that we're talking about. Um, in terms of what it might mean for your individual business, the team at Invest Hong Kong would be very happy to talk on a one-to-one -one basis um, because it really is quite detailed. But I think the final point I'd make on this is, at the end of the day, you should focus, to begin with at least, on where is the business opportunity? What is the scale of that business opportunity? And then you look at some of the mechanisms around how can you best structure um, your investment. It's like, in my opinion, you should never take a decision on where you invest based upon tax. It's icing on the cake. And I think FTAs play a similar role. So moving on to the Greater Bay Area, um, this is a national policy priority um, from Beijing. Um, and it really has a number of features that it's trying to leverage the full potential of the Greater Bay Area. And GBA covers the two SARs, Special Administrative Regions of Hong Kong and Macau, and nine key cities within Guangdong. 
and the strategic intents are shown um, in the colored boxes. So innovation is at the heart of the GBA vision. Um, and in this, Hong Kong has a particular role in being the international innovation and technology hub. Um, making the region internationally competitive is another key point. Making it a hotbed of commerce at a global level, leveraging the phenomenal manufacturing capacity within the region, um, also very important, and also utilizing the logistics. But it's not all about business, it's also about having a great living environment. So the livability part is also very important. Um, this slide shows in a little bit more detail um, the key cities that form the GBA. Um, I won't bore you with the details, um, but probably the key message is that the 11 cities in total um, account for 11% of the total GDP of China. So significant. And this next slide shows you how very significant it is. As of today, GBA, this region of 11 cities, is more or less the 10th largest economy in the world. So similar in size to Canada, similar in size to Australia, um, similar in size to South Korea. Um, so it is a big economic entity. Um, and secondly, um, the prospects for rapid growth are very high. So GBA in 10 years' time could be more or less the fifth largest economy on the globe. Um, and that's in the context of China, probably by then being the largest economy on the globe. Um, so something that's worth paying attention to, I would suggest. And what is really important from a business point of view is that GBA is home to 72 million people who have got the highest GDP per capita within the whole of China, home too to some of the most innovative companies in China. I'm sure you'll be familiar with Shenzhen as um, the home to some of China's leading innovation-led companies. And the idea is to facilitate the economic integration of these cities three different legal systems, um, different um, currencies, to leverage the, the best of all systems. You could make the analogy to the EU with the freer movement of people, goods, services, and capital factors in, in sort of economic terms. Um, and what that will do is unleash the potential of the region. Um, quite often, a comparison is made to other Bay Areas around the world. Um, some people simply think that GBA is sort of this part of the world's version of the Bay Area on the west coast of the US. Um, as you can see from this, it's a little bit different. It's 10 times the size in terms of population. So I think GBA, what makes it stand out, is really the massive scale of GBA. Um, and that brings it back to the scale, the extent, the depth of the business opportunities. Um, policy measures are being introduced on an ongoing basis to facilitate um, this vision of the closer economic integration of the region. Um, we'll share the slides with you afterwards, so I won't go through all of this. But there will be incentives around taxation there will be preferential access for certain sectors, the legal sector, construction sector, um, the facilitation of moving around within the region, and lots on the innovation agenda. Um, what we will also do after this is share with you 14 different notes that we have got on the opportunities um, in a number of sectors and also some of these facilitation measures. Um, and our job to invest Hong Kong is to help you understand what is most relevant to your business. Um, Hong Kong has got this very key role to play within GBA, and really it's the bridge between GBA and the rest of the world. 
So in the context of today's discussion, it could be ASEAN companies coming into Hong Kong and then going further more deeply into the GBA. Um, but equally, companies in the GBA using Hong Kong to go out to the rest of the world. So very much this two-way street. Um, some of the key things in terms of why Hong Kong has got such an important role to play uh, listed on this slide and broadly fit into the government policy side, the support that we got in terms of incentives, policy initiatives, um, the fact that Hong Kong is home to so much international talent, and then the facilities that we've got within the city that really are suitable for world-class companies. Um, to be trite, money makes the world go round. Obviously, Hong Kong is one of the world's top three international financial centers. So the ability to raise capital at every stage from angel through to listing on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange is very important. And that business environment too. I'd like to drill into a little bit more detail on how Hong Kong might work let's say for a manufacturing company that is in a technology related business um, and here we foresee that let, let's say it's a company from malaysia um, that you're looking at the gba you're looking at wider china perhaps looking to serve northeast asia from hong kong you could have an r d team and a financial team and a strategy team in Hong Kong. Um, in terms of your product development, you do design and some R&D, avail of the intellectual property protection in Hong Kong. But then when you want to prototype and produce your goods, there's nowhere better in the world, to be honest, than in Guangdong. The speed at which prototyping can be done, the quality of production very high now, um, and the world-class logistics um, making it very easy to serve both the mainland domestic market, but also markets around the world. But then when you're looking to take your product or service back to the international markets, you can come back to Hong Kong, your sales and marketing function in Hong Kong, using the financial wherewithal of Hong Kong. It could be trade finance, FX, hedging, we've got something called corporate treasury, um, center structure that is very tax efficient, for instance. Um, so there's sort of two parts at either end of the spectrum where Hong Kong might play a role. Um, this is just one example. There are different examples of models for different sectors. And, and perhaps Herman will touch on some of the financial and professional services ones, um, and Cindy in terms of what she sees in tourism and hospitality. Um, lots of resources out there um, on what the GBA is. There's a dedicated website in Hong Kong. Um, there's Instagram if you prefer pictures. Um, there's also a dedicated um, website through the Lead Bureau in Hong Kong on Greater Bay. Um, what I would say is most of these are particularly in the language of business. Um, there's a lot of sort of policy speak. So what we're trying to do at Invest Hong Kong is really bring Greater Bay Area to life and talk in the language of business. And at the end of the day, our job at Invest Hong Kong is all about business. So the teams um, here in Hong Kong and outside Hong Kong work with companies of all shapes and sizes, every sector of the economy. So at the planning stage, helping you identify the business opportunities for you in Hong Kong, and then take you through the setup process, help you launch, get plugged into the right networks. And in the longer term, we work with you to grow your business in Hong Kong, using Hong Kong, the GBA, wider China, um, and elsewhere. On the Greater Bay Area, um, we are in the process of setting up a dedicated Greater Bay Area team in Hong Kong. We will be having lots of information on the Invest Hong Kong website in the language that business people can understand, 
cutting away the sort of um, political government speak. Um, so hopefully making it easier for you to pinpoint what it means for you. Um, we will be collaborating with our counterparts in the other 10 cities. And what we're aiming to get to is the ability to, let's say, a biotech company from Singapore um, that is looking at this part of the region um, to say, do ABC in Hong Kong, that you need some manufacturing facility and you need to do that in Zhongshan. And we'll give a single proposition to that company. Um, uh, so that's where we're heading towards. So please feel free to get in touch with the team at any time. Um, we have um, colleagues in um, ASEAN. Um, so Kum Tanacha in Bangkok, in um, as she normally goes by, um, Pak Hilwan in Jakarta, and Melvin in Singapore. Um, they'd be very happy to have a chat with you tomorrow or Monday, month after next year, whenever you're ready. And they can bring in the team in Hong Kong to help you drill down into more and more detail about what it means. Or feel free to get in touch with me. My email address is here, but you can find me on LinkedIn as well. So if we can help, we'd love to help. Um, and just to show you how complicated GBA is in terms of figuring out all the different plans. There's work at the ministry level in Beijing. You can see some of the things listed here. As I said, we'll share the slides. There's a whole range of different plans from Guangdong, Shenzhen on different topics, business use, tourism, elderly care. Then there's a whole load of thematic plans as well on ecology, education, water safety, railway development plans, everything that you can conceivably think of has got a plan. Um, and what we do know at Invest Hong Kong is this is impossible for businesses to navigate. You don't have the time to go into all of this. So our job is to make it easier for you and to zero in on what's important to your business. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you once again to our co-organizers, the Singapore and Malaysian Chambers. Um, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. That was an uh, excellent and, and very uh, concise uh, presentation of, 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 a, of an area that's actually very, very fact-filled and very, very fulsome. Uh, there's a lot of information in there that, that Stephen touched on. Uh, he, he, unfortunately, he has another engagement and won't be able to join us for the Q&A. Uh, but did, uh, one, one, I, I add at this point that one little known fact, he, he touched a little bit on, on R&D, one little known fact is that Hong Kong has a very underrated and unknown, but very influential R&D uh, uh, industry that, that you know, comes out from the universities that, that has driven a lot of innovation in mainland China uh, as well. Um, at this point in time, I'd, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Herman Chair uh, to deliver his presentation. Uh, Herman, if you will, can I hand the mic over to you? Sure. Um, I was just going to talk through the uh, opportunities of uh, business and professional services um, for uh, overseas investors, ASEAN investors into Hong Kong and then later on Greater Bay. Um, it is very, actually very timely that um, yesterday um, the regulators uh, in Hong Kong and China uh, first went through the details of a uh, arrangement for Hong Kong registered lawyers mm -hmm. to practice in the Greater Bay Area. So now registered uh, lawyers in Hong Kong, after passing examination, they can practice in the Greater Bay Area. And the implication of that is overseas law firms with their Hong Kong registered lawyers, now uh, they can practice in the Greater Bay Area and that will further enhance their advisory work to their overseas clients uh, who would like to come to Hong Kong to set up their operation and then to go into the Greater Bay Area. So that's one area that on the legal side that uh, is happening very timely. Uh, and then the second part is uh, for constructions, uh, architects, 
and uh, insurance professionals, they are also allowed uh, to practice in the Greater Bay Area. So there is a mutual recognition of qualifications uh, between the Hong Kong professionals and the mainland standard. So they will be allowed to uh, practice in the Greater Bay Area using Hong Kong as a uh, as the headquarters in the region. And uh, finally, I would like to put uh, one um, example that I actually have a client which is a ASEAN-based accounting firm. They firstly set up their operation in Hong Kong this year uh, with a plan of going into Greater Bay Area to expand their network. So what I would like to say is there are a lot of opportunities for business and professional services provider to come to set up in Hong Kong and further expand to their, uh, their business in Greater Bay Area because overseas investors, they, uh, when they want to uh, go into the Greater Bay Area, there are lots of regulations uh, because of the different jurisdictions between Hong Kong and China. And the professional service providers are the ones that this investor would go to, to and ask for advice. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Herman. I, I, uh, I see we have over 100 participants at this point in time. I know for a fact, uh, looking at the RSVP list, uh, that we have quite a few professional services firms, uh, representatives on, on today's uh, webinar. So uh, what you have said and what uh, Ron was about to say is, is going to be very relevant to, to our professional services participants today. Uh, Ronald, is, uh, Ronald is a very distinguished lawyer in his own right, and I'd like to uh, invite him at this point to, to uh, make his presentation. Uh, thank you, Ben. So, as time is the premium, so I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go right into my presentations. Now, um, as you can see from my first slides, if I can get to there, um, can you turn the page? Next page. See, if, if you look at the slides, how much, okay, um, is the ASEAN countries investing in China? China is the uh, biggest trade partners uh, with ASEAN for the, for the 10 consecutive years. If you look at the slides, it's uh, 206 billion in 2018. The bilateral trade is actually close to 300 billion. So quite sizable. And most importantly, many of this uh, are investing in China, uh, investing in Hong Kong, and jump out into the mainland. You can look at this slide. The, the Hong Kong is one of the uh, uh, largest uh, source of foreign direct investments into China. It accounted for 59 plus 54% of the national total. Uh, as, as at the end of 2018, is nearly 1,100 billion. So quite sizable. Now, obviously, with such sizable investments, uh, many people oh, first go to invest Hong Kong to ask for opportunities. Um, and of course, they, the clients do their own due diligence. But most importantly, when they come to the lawyers, the accountants, what do they ask? Well, I'm investing billions or millions of dollars um, through Hong Kong into the GBA. Okay, Would this be protected? Uh, is the rule of law transparent, et cetera. Obviously, the rule of law in Hong Kong is extremely transparent, but so far as concerns investment protection, uh, Hong Kong has lots of, of uh, very unique mechanism, okay, that only applies to Hong Kong. For example, if you are investing through Hong Kong into China, your investments are protected, so to speak, okay, in the events that there is any change of government policies or change of policies of a local government, uh, in whether it is in China or in Hong Kong, there is what we call the CEPA, um, Closer Economic Partnership Agreement Mediation Mechanism. Okay, we're not talking about let's go to court or let's go to arbitration. It is a mediation process. Okay, where uh, the uh, government agencies, whether in China or you know, in the mainland or in Hong Kong. They will try to settle the differences uh, in terms of a win-win situation to resolve the disputes. So oh, this is one of the uh, main mechanisms that Hong Kong has to protect the investors' interests. 
obviously in the unfortunate events that one has to go into arbitration, um, which there are quite a few, because when you do business, you cannot uh, avoid or whether large or small types of uh, disputes. So oh, many of my uh, clients will ask, well, I I'm going to uh, have an argument with a Hong Kong, with a mainland parties. Um, how can I, I make sure that, that if I win the case, uh, I have the, that they have the money to pay me. You see, the vice versa is also true. Many of the mainland clients will have the same questions. Now, this is the, uh, as you can see from the slides, the first and only jurisdiction, we are Hong Kong, outside the mainland where parties to arbitral proceedings can apply to the Chinese courts for what we call the interim measures uh, in the mainland. So we can actually, if it is a, a Hong Kong seated arbitration, then you can go to the mainland China, you go to the Chinese courts to make sure that the assets of your mainland parties are secured. Similarly, for mainland companies, the same applies as well. So it is always mutual. Now, uh, Hong Kong obviously has lots of lawyers. Uh, as a lawyer, personally, I find them too many. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Hong Kong has uh, over 10,000 lawyers because of the highly populated areas and uh, uh, over 8,000 barristers, uh, the last I see that. Now, um, we do need uh, these lawyers because uh, Hong Kong is a very business oriented place, not only for the disputes, for the IPOs or for commercial contracts, setting up of the companies. Okay, So there are lots of legal experts in Hong Kong. As you can see, um, um, many are, are, are experts on IPOs, deal makings, constructions, IPIT, marine. I thought you saw Stephen's slides. Okay, how do you transport the goods in Hong Kong? Maritime trading before the banks, uh, insurance, arbitration, mediation, and of course, uh, court litigation. So all these areas are, are, are covered as well. Uh, Hong Kong obviously is a common law country, um, um, as we lawyers put it. I've been traveling around the ASEAN countries uh, for a number of years. Many of them have their own laws, uh, own, own rule of laws. Uh, some have civil laws, some have a similar common laws. But in Hong Kong, many of the lawyers are not only common law trained, okay, but they are extremely familiar with the common law and civil law systems. Many, in fact, speaks a variety of languages. Okay, so um, as Herman mentioned, I was actually in that. Uh, uh, Zoom seminar as well about the China uh, registered Hong Kong lawyers going in to uh, practice law in China and in in in, in the mainland. So oh, many of the uh, uh, of you participants out there, you may have a preferred law firm. So oh, uh, these law firms will most likely have their own uh, GBA lawyers, okay, which are uh, which have passed the exams but also Hong Kong qualified. Many people ask, well, what if in the uh, uh, in this pandemic, I cannot travel? Uh, what, what's going to happen to that? Do, do you have any online platform? Yes, obviously, Hong Kong has the online platform. We call them the ODR. Um, I like to invent a term called the ODM. Okay, many people talk about dispute resolutions. But not only that, okay, there's also the online deal making, called it the ODM. The, in Hong Kong, we have the Yibram. Okay, um, electronic business related arbitration and mediation. This is a, an online platform for both uh, dispute resolution and deal making. There are a number of rules uh, for this eBrand. For example, we call them the COVID-19 rules um, and, and the ODR platform specifically for arbitration and mediation. And uh, they are, as far as I know, entering into some sort of framework agreements with the APEC economies. There's also this um, rather uh, good idea. Okay, we look at the last point. It's called Hong Kong Investment, Hong Kong Law, and Hong Kong Arbitration. So Wookie, as we call it, is a new term, probably started some two weeks ago, where uh, Hong Kong companies or Hong Kong investments uh, investing in the GBA can apply Hong Kong laws and can have their disputes settled in Hong Kong by way of arbitration. 
So oh, for those who are familiar with common laws, also, uh, they can jump board, they can set up companies in Hong Kong, then invest in China with the Hong Kong investment, Hong Kong law, and settle the disputes in Hong Kong as well. Okay, this is Hong Kong investment, Hong Kong law, and Hong Kong arbitration. Obviously, if you look at the, the black and white slides, um, um, Hong Kong's container throughputs are amongst the top uh, in the world. It's a busy part. It's not only we have got ships, okay, we have, we have the busiest logistics center or one of the busiest logistics center in the world. Now, uh, the most, most recent exciting news is that uh, according to the Baltic and International Maritime Council, the BIMCO, as we call it, has just added Hong Kong as one of the jurisdictions to settle disputes by way of arbitration. For those uh, um, um, involved in the maritime trade, okay, BIMCO, or, or when you charter ships, uh, BIMCO is one of the forms that, uh, that you use regularly and you can settle the disputes in Hong Kong. Now, last but definitely not the least, okay, we have got the Mediate First. Mediate First is an, in, uh, is an initiative by Hong Kong, uh, by the Department of Justice, by the Hong Kong government. Um, it reflects uh, the Asian cultures, okay, or the ASEAN cultures, including Hong Kong and the mainland. Um, when I first started, people don't like to just go into courts or arbitration, they like to negotiate first. And now we call it more sophisticatedly, we call mediate first. And that is the initiative, try to mediate first. And then if um, mediation is unsuccessful, then we proceed to arbitration or court proceedings, okay? Now, uh, there will be a GBA mediation platform. Um, mediation is obviously built in all the commercial contracts and it's the preferred way to settle disputes. And finally, uh, mediation is to attract a win-win situation. So if you invest in Hong Kong, jump out into uh, the mainland, the GBA. So mediation will be the first thing that you will uh, encounter uh, in case of any disputes. Obviously, it, you might, might say that, oh, Ronald, you've been talking about all the dispute resolutions. As I said, there are experts, okay, on different, um, non-contentious areas, IPO, uh, uh, complex contracts, et cetera, that can help you to deal with all your issues. But obviously your first point of call will likely to be uh, invest Hong Kong before spending money on all the accountants and lawyers. <laughs> so that's my um, presentation. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ronald. That's, uh, that was amazing. Uh, the um, one, one, one uh, very interesting factor uh, that you had on your slide, which, which I found very uh, interesting and, and uh, and uh, I think a lot of people could ask, if, you know, as, as, as China continues to rise and, and, and connect with the rest of the world, what is the continued relevance of Hong Kong in that, you know, the China development picture, the interaction with China? Uh, what, one thing you had in your slide was that, did, did I get it right? 1,000 billion, 1 trillion US dollars of, of investments uh, representing over 50% of the investments in China have gone through Hong Kong. Yes, uh, very um, amazing. So Hong Kong remains very, very uh, relevant, obviously, to uh, to to you know to to uh, China uh, in, in foreign investment in China, and and clearly you know a lot of uh, uh, disputes work could come out of that. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, once again, I, I'd like to at this point uh, hand the uh, the microphone over to Miss Cindy Wong. Uh, Cindy uh, will uh, you know I've introduced Cindy earlier, and I, I look forward to her presentation. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Cindy. Uh, actually, who does not like good food? Uh -huh. You may wonder why uh, you cannot come to uh, China directly, go to Hong Kong and then to GBA. So uh, I will tell you more uh, and about, uh, I will highlight, you know, a few roles of Hong Kong, uh, especially if you are uh, a SME, a small to medium sized enterprise. First of all, um, Hong Kong is a good risk manager to enter China. Um, Especially, it is important uh, that there are 72 million people. Um, Hong Kong would be a good place to test out your concept. Even though 72 million, uh, we share same dialect, Cantonese, and also with similar eating habit, but it would be good to adjust uh, the recipe and adapt. And then the next thing, if you are successful in Hong Kong, and then you can go to Macau first, due to uh, similarities uh, of doing business, and then next, 
uh, maybe to Shenzhen or to Dongguan, to Zhongshan. Second, uh, Hong Kong can be your marketing agency for China. Uh, Hong Kong, Macau, and even nice cities in China, our consumers actually tend to use different social media in our own city. Hong Kong, we use Instagram, Facebook. In China, uh, we use WeChat and Douyin. In Hong Kong, we use traditional Chinese. In China, uh, we use simplified Chinese. So Hong Kong has a free flow of information, and we have plenty of professional agencies to help you to monitor the global trend and also adjust your marketing strategies faster and to be more targeted. Third, uh, Hong Kong can be your fund manager and your matchmaker for expansion. Hong Kong has comprehensive banking system and exchange control and capital. Many FMB clients, they use Hong Kong as a place to raise funding and search for the right partners to expand into GBA together. Like for example, um, a good partner can be Tian Tian Catering, can be Charles, uh, and he is one of them, one of the competent and local partners you can work with. But of course, uh, for Invest Hong Kong, we also encourage collaboration and engagement. So uh, there are other associations and also other contacts we can share with you. So let us know. We hope that we can help uh, in the future and then we look forward to Charles' present, uh, uh, presentation. Yeah, thank you. Well, Cindy touched on a topic that is very close to uh, the hearts of many friends in, in Southeast Asia, which is you know traveling to be able to travel to Hong Kong to enjoy Hong Kong's many famous restaurants. Uh, we will hope that uh, travel will open up uh, for everyone soon, and then that we can uh, come and you know uh, eat more in Hong Kong and also in the Greater Bay Area, enjoy the cuisine. Uh, more. Uh, we, we, you know, touching on that topic, and Cindy mentioned this already, um, that, you know, that, that our next speaker is a real life uh, uh, example of someone who has successfully entered uh, the Greater Bay Area, uh, starting, I believe, uh, and Charles will, will, will correct me if I'm wrong, with Shenzhen, uh, in, in the restaurant business. So uh, we, you know, I look very much forward to, to Charles sharing with us how he's uh, gone into the Greater Bay Area through Hong Kong. Charles, uh, can I give the mic to you at this point in time? Charles, you might need to unmute your, your mic. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Oh, hi everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for Singapore Chamber and Invest Hong Kong invite. My name is Charles, the chairman of S3 Group Holding Limited, a listed company in Hong Kong, which provides design and supply chain management service for fashion retailer in Europe. On the other hand, also, I'm the founder of Hong Kong T uh, Catering Group, uh, Tintin Catering Group, which we do FMB brand consultants and management. Uh, work management. For those who are from Singapore, might hurt a few of the brands that we are actually currently managing successfully in GBA. They are Tintin Hainanese Chicken Rice, a noodle story, Lao Jie Fang Beef Noodles, and 1950s Coffee. They are all Michelin guided street foods from Singapore. We have cited the Greater China Master Franchise since 2017 and put them all under one roof, created a restaurant named Tintin Plus, offer, offering a variety of food selection for these four brands. And created many other dishes for the local market and live up the standard. Our first Tintin Plus restaurant opened 2018 in Causeway Bay, Hong Kong, Fashion Walk. We have created a big crowd and our story was also written in Singapore and Michelin website. As we are the first and only restaurant that have combined four Michelin guided brand into one room. The next slide, next slide. Uh, the next one, oh, the next one, yes. Uh, the one be, uh, oh, this one's okay as well. Um, this is the four brands that we actually manage from Singapore. They're all four Michelin guided brands. So it's Tintin, uh, Tintin Hainanese Chicken Rice, a Noodle Story, Lao Jie Fang Beef Noodles, and also 1950s Coffee. And the next one, please. Okay. Um, actually following the success that we have for the first, first restaurant, we have opened our second restaurant six months later in Zhaozhou Element Shopping Mall, which is the next slide. The next one. This is uh, the restaurant where we have opened in Element Shopping Mall, which is in Chim Sha area. Okay, 
And in 2019, we have a new concept of doing fast food and takeaway service. Therefore, have opened our concept store, Tintin Express in Kwai Chong. This is our, our Tintin Express restaurant, which is in Kwai Chong, which we do takeaway and also uh, fast food service. And the next one, please. And then earlier of the year, we have opened our third Tintin Plus restaurant in Sha Tin, New Time Plaza, one of the heaviest traffic shopping malls in Hong Kong. And during COVID, the next one, and during COVID, we have actually opened, decided to enter into the next big city in GPA, which is Shenzhen. We have opened our first Tintin Plus restaurant in Shenzhen Bao An Yifang Center two months ago. This is also one of the heaviest traffic shopping mall city in Shenzhen. Branding is branding and image is very important for foreign F and B brands trying to enter to this market. A local famous brand will have a much higher successful rate to come to this market. Especially Hong Kong is a very international city. The acceptance and of international cuisine and foreign brand recognition is the highest amongst all other city in GBA. Hong Kong is always a stepping stone and test of markets before getting into China. If brand cannot be recognized in Hong Kong, rarely can be success in China, I would say. For those who know Tintin well, they're very famous in Singapore. The next, this is the, actually the, um, the one previously is the media coverage we have in Singapore. And once we land in China, all the media and press are all free of charge, come and report our news. And this is all the re reporter freely come to, Hong, uh, come to our restaurant, just report our news coming into Hong Kong. This is all free marketing. This is very important for, for new brand coming into town to get their names out there. We have received a lot of invites to participate in many events to let people know us more, which include Hong Kong famous wine and dine festival. These are all the events that we have been invited to. And the next slide as well, please. This is a, a wine and dine festival we've been invited to. And next one. Next slide, please. Okay. So earlier of the year, uh, the previous one, please. The previous one, previous one. Thank you. So early of the year, we have done an annual dinner for Hong Kong China Construction Bank, catering a total of 3,000 people. And many of those are mainland staff based in Hong Kong. So if you see this, uh, the photo from the left, this is actually the catering that we have done for Construction Bank, uh, which is one of the biggest, one of the biggest bank in China. So we have catered there uh, in Hong Kong, we have catered 3,000 staff for them for the annual dinner. This opportunity allow us, allow us to understand ourselves more, to feel more confident before us expanding into the mainland. The exposure we have in Hong Kong allow people from the industry to recognize our brand and able to attract landlord to give us better location for our expansion. Local, location selection is so important in order to succeed in this industry. Without a good location to begin with, chance of succeed is very, very minimal. The next, nice, next slide, please. The next one. Next one, please. Okay. And the next one. Next one, please. Yes. So um, uh, follow up what I was saying. The exposure we have in Hong Kong allow people from industry to recognize our brand and able to attract landlord to give us better location for expansion. As you all know, F&B location is so important and without, without a good location to begin with, chance of succeed is very, very minimal. By having a good location is just the beginning and even with such a great exposure we have in Hong Kong, when we first landed China, we still need to spend a huge effort to promote and market ourselves in order to, for mass people to know us. Hong Kong being an international city where people from all over the world living and working here, building your own culture customer base is also very important. And for this, I must say thank you so much for Singapore Chamber and also the consulate office for their continuous support helping us to link each other together. 
the GPA market is huge, but it is still not as easy as many other things. I would say localization is very, very important. Every city in GPA is so unique and different. Therefore, going in step by step is very important as you can, as you can learn different things every day and able to adjust yourself to it. Nothing is easy, I must say. Huge market with huge competition as well. Therefore, for those who don't know the market well enough, I highly suggest for you to find a low re reliable local partner. You will definitely help you to enhance the chance of success. And as you see from the photos, uh, the local consulates really, really supportive. And photo from the left is actually when we opened our first restaurant in Shenzhen, where the consulate general from Singapore, Southern China, actually come for our opening and continue to visit our restaurant and bring the, bring the local crowd, uh, the Singaporean crowd to our restaurant as well. And to the right, uh, uh, Xi Fu is uh, uh, very supportive as well. She always come to our restaurant to support. And also every time when we open a new restaurant, she will come for the opening to support support um, what we say the local brand, Singapore, Singaporean brand. So I think uh, in order to succeed in um, uh, uh, foreign place, places, we need our own people to accept us and attract new customers as well. So this is my sharing for today and hope to you all enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. That was uh, very enlightening. Uh, I just wanna, uh, before we, we, we go into the questions, um, I'd like to invite any, any of our participants today. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask them in the chat group uh, and, and we can uh, raise them for the, uh, for, the, for the speakers to answer. Uh, but Charles, before we leave you, um, yep. I, 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 you mentioned earlier that you know, it's, if anybody wants to enter into the Chinese market, uh, they should use Hong Kong as a testing ground. If you cannot succeed in Hong Kong, you're not likely to succeed in mainland China. Um, I just like to understand a bit more about that. Why do you say that? Charles? Sorry, I lose you. Can you say, yeah. yes, uh, say again? <clears throat> yeah, sure. Um, you, you said in your presentation that anybody that wants to enter the, uh, the, the greater Chinese market should consider using Hong Kong as the testing ground. Um, and if you can't succeed in Hong Kong, you, you probably can't succeed in mainland China. Um, I'm just curious to understand why uh, that would, why that is, why that is the case. Why do you feel that way? I would say Hong Kong is more like an international city and the recognition of international brand is much higher than in China. So uh, like we use ourselves as a life experience. When we enter into Hong Kong, everyone knows Tintin because they've been traveling to West of the world and also their acceptance of international cuisine is much higher. But when we first opened a restaurant two months ago in China, that's not the case. People from the industry or the landlord may know you because they actually, they look into these things very carefully, very uh, precisely. But the local citizen, they may not have been troubled as much as they do in Hong Kong. So they don't know your brand really well. So you have to really market yourself and promote yourself much more than you are in Hong Kong. And I would say because, of, uh, well, before the COVID, uh, they travel to Hong Kong much more. So if you say closer to the border, like Shenzhen City, they usually they don't travel to Singapore, but they travel to Hong Kong very often. Though many of the people that have, haven't really been to the Tintin in Singapore, but they've really been to our restaurant in Hong Kong. So our recognition is actually from Hong Kong, not from Singapore. So they know what's much, so it's like a, a like a, I, I always say that Hong Kong is always a stepping stone. Yes. Okay. So so Hong Kong as a marketing platform. As, yep. a show, as a showroom for, for ASEAN brands uh, for, yep. for, because it's more accessible for Chinese tourists. Yep. That's, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. Um, um, we, we have a few questions coming in from the participants, mm -hmm. but I'd like to throw this open to, to, the, other, <clears throat> to the other panelists. Uh, you know, and, we, and we've got, we've got uh, folks in, in uh, experts in tourism, experts in, in professional services, uh, access to the Chinese market. What Charles said about you know using Hong Kong as the first stop, as a as a showroom, as in a way, uh, as as you know as a launch pad, you know, for recognition purposes in Greater China, uh, in mainland China, does that apply to other industries as well? Uh, 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 but perhaps uh, I can I can ask Herman and, and, and Ronald to, to speak about that in terms uh, of the professional uh, services. Uh, 
Uh, definitely, because uh, Hong Kong already has a very good base of uh, business and professional services. As uh, Ronald mentioned, there are lots of uh, lawyers, accountants in Hong Kong. So they are already a very well established infrastructure and system in Hong Kong. Um, and uh, for the Greater Bay Area, uh, it is just one hour away from Hong Kong by train or by cars. So. Um, it will further enhance the location of Hong Kong as the heart of the uh, center in the Greater Bay Area, not, uh, and also for the rest of Asia as well. Uh, as you all probably know that uh, ASEAN countries is about three or four hours flight away from Hong Kong. So from, and we are all in the same time zone. So um, for ASEAN countries to do uh, uh, business in Hong Kong and then uh, low, uh, gradually to go into China uh, is, is the, we can see there's a benefit. In fact, uh, there is a long history for ASEAN countries, uh, ASEAN companies to come to Hong Kong first and then uh, gradually expand into uh, China. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. from Singapore, DBS Bank, they first came to Hong Kong and then expand into China. Uh, from Malaysia, uh, Dabi. Uh, they also established in Hong Kong first and gradually expand their business in uh, China and also uh, Shangri-La Hotel Group. And then from Indonesia, uh, Nippo Group, uh, also similar uh, history from Hong Kong and then into China. From Thailand, CP Group, also from Hong Kong into China. So there is a lot of uh, good history from ASEAN companies to come to Hong Kong first and then expand mm. to China. <clears throat> yes, uh, to you. supplement Herman, um, um, because there are, um, from, from, a law, from a legal perspective, the um, rule of law in Hong Kong is very transparent. It has been operating for a long, long, long time and has been operating extremely successfully. So uh, for so many years, when businesses coming into Hong Kong, be the ASEAN or from wherever, even from the mainland, investing in Hong Kong, okay, they know what they're expecting. Uh, the lawyers, as I said, and, and of course, the other professionals as well, are well versed in the ASEAN market and in the GBA, um, as Herman says, as from Hong Kong to GBA, um, is sorry, and an hour by high speed rail. I mean, I, I tested the uh, high speed rail the second day when they opened. I entered, I traveled to Phu Tien, and um, it's it's only if 10 minutes, and then you are into a new area. It's an eye opener. So, um, so oh, because of that, it is very extremely easy to travel back and forth from GBA to Hong Kong with the Hong Kong steady base, uh, uh, the rule of law and of course various professional services and most importantly the business knows how hong kong operates east meets west okay and that's why a lot of them choose hong kong as the base as a test market uh, as charles put it i i think he put it as a showcase okay it's like a showroom okay the hong kong and that's what hong kong is for all the hong problems. kong so hong kong has a familiar environment for international uh, and regional businesses and, and gives you very easy access logistically and by travel to, to the rest of, uh, rest of the GPA. Uh, thank you both for, very much for that. I, we have a question from Wijaya in Indonesia. I think this is a great question. Um, he says, you know, so far all our entire focus has been about how to get into the China market through Hong Kong. But how about getting products from China to let's say Indonesia or anywhere in ASEAN? Um, I, I think, I think uh, somebody mentioned earlier that uh, China is now ASEAN's biggest trading partner. The converse is true. This year, ASEAN overtook the EU to be China's largest trading partner, and, and that's likely to grow as well. Um, so when, when, people, when, when, when companies, businesses in ASEAN are trying to get uh, import goods from China, and China is the world's factory, the biggest manufacturer in the world, I, I guess, you know, um, we need a reliable inspector of these goods before they shipped out from China. There's always a concern about the, uh, the quality of goods before they sent out. How can Hong Kong businesses and Hong Kong professionals help with this? Why, why don't I, I answer this question? Um, 
Mm-hmm. A, 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 a lot of the mm-hmm. clients actually do have this sort of problems. Um, um, you, how, how do I make sure that before it, it's, uh, the goods are being shipped on board, you do know quality, whether uh, they have shipped 1,000 bad calculators, okay, and, and, and then you get 1,000 bad calculators in, in Indonesia. Now, uh, given the relatively simple traveling between Hong Kong and the GBA, and, uh, and, and you might know it is rather simple. So a lot of the international surveyors or inspectors uh, will quickly travel from Hong Kong to the port of loading to in all the factories to inspect the cargo. Now, many of these uh, inspectors are uh, reputable <coughs> international companies uh, um, from ASEAN countries, from Europeans, uh, from, from Americas as well. So oh, they can travel to China just um, uh, to GBA within in one hour, probably more, and then do the inspection and then come back okay, uh, on the same day. So that's um, what, what I usually suggest to the, uh, to my clients. Obviously, they are very good international uh, inspection and surveyors in um, mainland as well, in the GBA, uh, similar to uh, your businesses out there. They want to invest in China as well. So they open up their office in Hong Kong, and then from Hong Kong, they open their office in the GBA. So, so you can get these professional services uh, through Hong Kong and from the GBA. Um, many of them travels back and forth uh, Hong Kong GBA every single day. Well, but Ronald, I mean, <clears throat> to your point, um, you know, they're, they're clearly global companies, inspection companies, quality control companies that are based in Hong Kong. But likewise, they also have offices in mainland China, most likely. So why use the uh, Hong Kong inspectors? You know, are they, you know, are they, is there a cost advantage? Are there sort of non-international firms that are very reliable in Hong Kong that might be cheaper than the big international firms that have offices in, in mainland China? You know, why, why go through Hong Kong for that? Um, because Hong Kong and the GBA, let's put it that way, the, the GBA are so close together. Um, uh, many of these international inspectors will be stationed in Hong Kong and then traveled up into mainland. Although, Oh, they may have a couple of inspectors up in the GBA, but many of which will be based in Hong Kong, okay? because Hong Kong, they do need to have a uh, um, rather uh, sizable and uh, need of inspectors. Many of the goods um, usually travels to Hong Kong and then transship to Indonesia as well. I have seen quite a few of these uh, instances. So, oh, not many international inspectors will have two teams in such close areas. Many of them will have the teams in Hong Kong, but they can go to jo- go to the GBA rather quickly. Okay, um, thank, thank, thank you. I would like to concur with what Ronald said. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I have spoken to a few uh, clients and also uh, certification and testing company <coughs> as well. And the, uh, the professionalism of the, uh, uh, the staff in Hong Kong and the system in Hong Kong actually uh, make overseas investor uh, have, a, have a very good image on the uh, reputation of Hong Kong as a testing mm-hmm. certification center. So I think that adds to the benefit of Hong Kong being a uh, import export hub uh, to, uh, for, for China and the rest of the world. And, 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 and as a lawyer, I'm a- say this, obviously, if you're testing an inspection company in, in Hong Kong makes a mistake, it's easier to sue them probably in, in Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> hope, you, hope it never happens. <laughs> uh, well, we have to think about that. I mean, the, the, you know, the, what's backing up that, 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 that certification is important, you know, and, and you know, how, how much teeth it has, right? Um, uh, we, we've been talking a lot about professional services, and I see in the chat group there's a, there's, a, there's a rather long and comprehensive question, which I'll get to about professional services. But um, I, I wanted to, to, to also uh, get Cindy's views, you know, in, in terms of the tourism and, and hospitality industry, sort of the, um, you know, what's Hong Kong's value to this GBA ASEAN nexus, this, this, this linkage between the, the GBA and, and, and the ASEAN economies? 
in tourism? And how, what role does Hong Kong play, whether it's going into China or coming out of China? Um, thank you, Basil. Well, actually, like uh, I talked before, you know, um, Hong Kong's value is mainly, you know, let me recap uh, again, is the, you know, the risk manager and also uh, market agency uh, fund manager. And also the last point uh, I mentioned, the last uh, is the matchmaker uh -huh, for companies. I think especially important nowadays. Um, for ASEAN companies, you know, enter uh, Greater Bay Area, I think it's very important, you know, for them to understand what is uh, needed, you know, uh, in the uh, GBA area, um, choose the right product if they are doing trading uh, or if they are doing restaurants, you know, um, uh, adapt to the local, the, the pallet and then uh, enter the GBA. I would say um, if they can adapt uh, the strategy uh, for uh, the GBA through Hong Kong, uh, the, successful, the successful rate uh, would be higher, uh, just like uh, yeah. Charles said before. Okay, and, and that's, that, that ties in with a question that, that one of our attendees has, uh, participants has asked. Uh, you talked about Hong Kong's role as a matchmaker. Um, so, you know, helping to match ASEAN businesses with a suitable partner in uh, the GBA or, or for that matter, any China. Uh, what are the key issues do you think? And, and I throw this open to all the panelists and, and Charles, uh, maybe you could also say something about this. What are the key issues of, I guess, finding and working with a good local partner um, to, to help, you know, with market entry into, into China or, or even with, you know, uh, importation of goods from China to, to, to ASEAN? What are the good, um, what are key issues that, that, that you've come across to, in finding and, and working with a good local partner? Uh, who, I, I don't know which other panelists would uh, like to speak. Should I start first? Okay, please go ahead. Yeah, I can start first. Um, to be honest, like uh, being a lo uh, local citizen, like I'm based in Hong Kong and been working in China for maybe 18 years. Uh, every, city in, every city in China is so different. Um, what I said earlier about location, location, location is if you're not from the place, you thought Ximsha Zhou is a good area for, for opening our shops, but actually there's certain area in Ximsha Zhou is actually good and certain area is not. And these informations, I think it's only a local partner can tell you. Like Cindy have said earlier, like in, in Hong Kong, we may use YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, but in China, we actually use other things. And if without a local partner, you, be, you may be spending your money like everywhere without getting any results. So um, a good local partner, they were able to tell you where you should spend your money, where you should not, and where this is, um, I think it's very important is to find you to best place to, to, to locate yourself. Um, myself, like opening the first restaurant in Hong Kong, coming to Shenzhen as a second place. Some people may mention Macau is a good spot, but if I, if I being a local people, I would say Macau, the, the population is not high, GDP is not the highest, that I would rather go to Shenzhen than Macau. Spending my efforts in Macau is no use. But why I use Hong Kong as a stepping stone, because the crowd of people in Hong Kong, shopping malls less in Hong Kong, uh, sp uh, spending power per person is much higher, the turn, turn, table turnaround is much higher. And it's much easy, easier business, I would say, when I do business in Hong Kong than in, in, in Shenzhen. So this is only a local person can tell you, but <laughs> other people will tell you, China, you get lots of opportunity, lots of populations, lots of people spending money. That's not the case, I think. Thank you, Charles. That's that's uh, that's very helpful. And and this is you know you've just you've just uh, uh, explained or highlighted the hallmarks of a, of a good local partner. <clears throat> mm. um, I guess for our participants, uh, from our participants' uh, uh, perspective, um, you know they would be looking at various possible partners in 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 their GBA uh, business relationship. Okay, um, what do you? I, I mean, I, I maybe I throw this also to. to to the other panelists, uh, you know, what, how do you, you know, what distinguishes, you know, when, when somebody comes, when they're discussing a, a financial partnership, how do, you, how do they tell uh, who's the right partner, who's a good partner, who's a partner that, 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 that you know, might be just, uh, 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 you know, uh, be doing a sales job, but, you know, unable to deliver uh, what they need in the end, who's honest, who's not, you know, 
I, I guess, you know, I'm not sure we, uh, I, I guess, I guess, you know, maybe somebody from Invest Hong Kong and, and Ronald, you've seen a lot of these disputes as well. Uh, maybe you could also mention a little bit about, you know, what you've seen, uh, you know, uh, sort of things to look out for uh, when, when engaging or, or deciding on a local partner. Uh, okay, maybe I'll go first. Um, I think uh, Hong Kong is uh, is the uh, platform for uh, it's also the platform for a lot of Chinese companies to go overseas as well. A lot of them have established the offices uh, in Hong Kong and from Hong Kong to go overseas. So when the ASEAN companies or uh, professional firm they come to Hong Kong and look for a partner. Uh, it's very easy. I mean, like what uh, Cindy said, is uh, Hong Kong is a place for matchmaking. Um, so you don't need to actually to go into China to find a good partner uh, in China. You can actually come to Hong Kong. And uh, already there are lots of Chinese company who are willing to work with overseas company and bring them into China. Uh, that's one point. Uh, the second point is, uh, uh, there are a lot of professions, uh, professionals in Hong Kong, lawyers, accountants, and they will be able to give advice to the overseas uh, uh, investors uh, to provide some uh, due diligence service and to uh, help the overseas investor to uh, advise them, hey, whether this company or this uh, person, uh, what is his reputation? What is his background? Uh, whether he will be able to bring uh, me into China and uh, and do a good business. So I think this is the value add for Hong uh, of, of Hong Kong uh, to overseas investor who want to go into China. I I, I cannot agree more with what uh, Charles says. Uh, getting a good partner it's a key. Okay. Um, what what I mean by good partner is that uh, I have seen so many. It, failures in that uh, uh, good business partners uh, and their partnership turns sour. Uh, and it ended up in courts, uh, uh, whether in Hong Kong or in the mainland. So uh, the, the, the first stage, okay, is to obtain um, a good partner. Okay, now uh, this is more like um, um, the job of Invest Hong Kong, more, more, as Charles put it, the gut feeling, okay, whether <laughs> this partner suits you. Now, from the legal perspective, um, um, the lawyers or the accountants come in to check the backgrounds. I mean, better as lawyers, but to do the due diligence, obviously, the background checks, whether this person is good for the money, yeah. uh, um, using a more slangy word. So uh, whether this person is a, a, a good person or genuinely, or whether they do have the experience what they said they have. But deep down, uh, for the professionals, uh, we can only check those information. Whether you trust this person, whether they, 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 uh, at the end of the day, the uh, ASEAN business can trust the mainland partners, the Hong Kong partners. And then, at the end of the day, it is more or um, a gut feeling. I mean, I, as, as a lawyer, I don't know. I, I, I'm certain that uh, using the word gut feeling is not very logical, but uh, mm. this is the first step. You need to trust your, you need to trust your friend, okay, before you start doing the due diligence uh, uh, on this person. Um, you do, you got to do the matchmaking yourself. You got to have a good feel about your partners. Okay, that's uh, that's what many of my clients have uh, have, have told me. And obviously, you've got to treasure the business relationships because once the relationships are uh, gone sour, oh, trust me, um, good for the lawyers. Okay, lots of fees <laughs> for me, but uh, not very good for business. Okay, I've seen so many of this happening. Well, thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, both of you. That's it, it's very helpful. Um, I, I guess, you know, Hong Kong does have a, a, a large choice of, of very professional advisors. And, and in order to determine whether your potential business partner is trustworthy, um, my, my own personal experience has, has been that, um, you know, there, there are many good lawyers in China as well, and accountants and so forth. Uh, but but uh, the, 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 they, they, you know, when, when, when connecting as an overseas person with a Chinese business, um, the one, the advisor does need to see it from the perspective of the international client or the, the, the global client and understand 
uh, there are things that, that a Chinese advisor may assume you already know because everybody in China knows this uh, in, in China. But uh, in fact, the overseas client doesn't know. So it's, you know, it's not the basics, you, 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 you know, that, that can very easily be overlooked or, 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 or slip through the cracks. Um, the Hong Kong advisors will be able to make sure you understand and, and, and take care of those and, and that those things don't, don't slip through. Um, so, so that's, I, uh, yeah. I may add a word because when I said earlier, uh, not, not necessary like any Hong Kong people may bring you to China, but they actually, they're a really good stepping stone. Uh, first of all, Hong Kong, they have a really good legal system, accounting system, and most importantly, language they are able to communicate with actually foreign investor. And through this uh, collaboration, you actually can learn much more and be able to get touch base of what China is like. As I said earlier in the presentation, every city in China is so different. Not every people in Hong Kong may be able to bring you to every city in China. They may say that I know China, but actually they don't know anything about China because every city is so different. But on the other hand, on the other hand, uh, you will know more about the China culture like, like the basic, you know, then actually take it as a stepping stone, you get to know more afterward. Hello? Hi, hi. Uh, Charles, I think you broke up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think Charles broke up a little bit there, but you know, I I, I completely agree with what he 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 yeah. said. I mentioned before, much harder to do so. And Basel, maybe uh, I can also add uh, one last point um, sure. because uh, we have a lot of also uh, companies, you know, they uh, partner with a lot of local partners. And then uh, one tip, very important tip, I think is uh, don't just believe everything that your friends told you. Uh -huh. Sometimes uh, a partner or a franchise team will be recommended by a friend who may not even have the experience uh, in doing the best business. And then that can be quite disastrous to the brand and uh, to the company. So um, my advice is always to do the fact check and then engage a professional firm to do some checking of the company, uh, to meet, uh, you know, the, to, you know, in the office, uh, to make sure, you know, the factory, um, you know, and the offices are, you know, are really, you know, the operating office. And also, yeah, um, in my opinion, you know, just don't just, you know, um, being a partner just because uh, they are you know, somebody's friend or relatives. That's quite uh, dangerous. Yes, yes, de definitely. I completely agree, Cindy. Uh, I, think, I think one of the things I would, I would add also is that, you know, uh, being a Singaporean myself, every time I come back to Singapore um, and I talk about what, you know, about China or, or Hong Kong, uh, I find that there's actually a very big cultural gap, a very big, you know, and, and that contributes to a big gap in understanding uh, between, you know, uh, people from ASEAN, from, from Southeast Asia and people in, in, you know, even in Hong Kong, but even more so in, in, in mainland China. And, and, and Hong Kong, if, if anything, is, is the probably, you know, uh, advisors in Hong Kong probably the best place to bridge that gap and, and make sure that, you know, things are, 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 are dealt with, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a careful way. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, very, that's been very helpful. Uh, I guess it's a very long question here. I'd like to, uh, we, we had uh, Wijaya also asking us, uh, I don't know if this is something that the panelists can answer or maybe Wijaya should reach out to Invest Hong Kong. And uh, about, you know, the question earlier about inspectors, Hong Kong based inspectors, how much more expensive uh, would they be than inspectors in uh, China? But Wijaya, I would suggest you uh, reach out to Invest Hong Kong, uh, get, some, uh, get some recommendations. And uh, and then you know uh, you can reach out to 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 to, to Ronald or, or myself as well, and I you know for for recommendations. Invest Hong Kong might have recommendations for for inspectors in China, uh, and you could do a comparison. I, I'm not sure we we really know the difference in it. it very much depends on the the individual company. You might you may find there's not much difference, 
or you may find that there's a little bit of a difference um, uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the cost, okay? Um, well, there's a question here, Ronald, I think this is more for you. Uh, if there's a lawyer, and, and Herman might know the answer as well, if there's a lawyer, a Hong Kong lawyer who's qualified in the GBA, um, what is the, uh, uh, you know, can, can the Hong Kong lawyers then uh, advise, I guess, uh, on laws in the GBA? Is, is that what the qualification means? Uh, yes. That's what okay. the qualification means, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and in terms of the, you know, the, 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 legal, the, the legal environment in China, it's very complicated. Um, how would a Hong Kong lawyer manage the, I guess, the various relationships in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in, in navigating the legal landscape in, um, in mainland China? I, I'm, I'm not sure anybody on this panel can answer that. It's sort of, it, it's really a case by case basis, but maybe, I don't know, Ronald, it looks like you want to say something about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll try to answer that, this, this question. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, yes. Whilst the um, the qualifications is a good thing, it is not as if the Hong Kong lawyers have not been to to the GBA. I mean, well before this term GBA, many of the professional, I think actually today more many of the professionals, the accountants, lawyers, inspectors, have been going to Shenzhen, uh, Zhongshan, and uh, uh, all the GBA cities. So they they have got many friends there, uh, many law firms. Individually, we have good, friendly local lawyers there. Okay, and um, and and I, I think the attitude is that we are trying to make the pie bigger. Okay, to to make sure to to how should I say it? Make the pie bigger, meaning that it is uh, it's no longer Hong Kong. It is a it's a big big economy called GBA. And that's, uh, we should look at it from that perspective. And if you're looking at it from that perspective, then and there's nothing to manage because it is one big economy. It is like I, oh, some of the law firms are in Central, some of them is in Quarry Bay. Well, how do you manage the, the, the lawyers in Central working in Quarry Bay or one chai? Okay, there, there's no such thing because it is one big economy. We're all working for one goal. So that is the relationship. And as I said, many of my good friends are actually from, uh, from, from law firms in China, some from Anzi as well, which is, uh, which is the PLC law firm that Basel is in. So um, it is a, a friendly business relationship, friendly competition. So that's what I, I, I would say. Yes, and, and, and to Ronald's point, a lot of firms, including my own, now have associations or relationships or are part of a PRC firm network. So, you know, we, the, navigating the, the laws in, in China is, is, is never a problem for us. Um, I, I have one last question. Uh, we, I'm being told that our time is almost up. I have one, one last question here for companies that want to engage, Southeast Asian companies that want to engage with the GPA uh, industry. How can Invest Hong Kong or other Hong Kong government agencies help them? You know, um, uh, maybe someone from Invest Hong Kong could, could say something about this. Um, okay, me first. <laughs> um, I think uh, if they have the interest uh, to enter GBA through Hong Kong, the very first is to find us. Uh -huh. And then we are here already and then we will connect them with our uh, industry specialists and provide our uh, advice to them, free advice. And then if we need, if, if they need uh, some information uh, uh, that we may not be able to answer, we will refer them to different service providers. Um, just one thing. Um... Invest Hong Kong also have offices in a lot of the cities in the Greater Bay Area. So we can easily connect them with the relevant parties uh, in the uh, Greater Bay Area as well through our own network. Okay, thank you very much. I, I have to say when, when I was first setting up uh, my business in, in, in Hong Kong many years ago, uh, I also uh, availed myself of the free services of, of Invest Hong Kong and, and found them to be very, very helpful for for um, uh, connecting me with all the uh, all the right people, and then you know it's it's free. It's provided by the government, and it's it's a top notch service. So you know why not use it? And they have offices in in Jakarta, Singapore, and uh, and in Thailand. Um, so with that, I'd like to thank the panelists, um, our investor, Hong Kong uh, colleagues, uh, 
um, and Cindy, Charles, uh, who's I, uh, Charles, thank you, and, and Stephen, obviously, for delivering the uh, uh, opening address. Ronald, thank you very much for your for your your experience and sharing, and uh, and all the participants, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope to see you on future webinars, and um, and that's all we have for today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Have thank a good you. weekend.